Hey, I'm Nixie Pixel, and we're at OzCon 2012, and I'm here with Simon, who has a lot of exciting news that's been happening this week with the Open Source Initiative. For people that don't know, what is the Open Source Initiative? So the Open Source Initiative was founded in 1998, actually at this conference uh, by Tim O'Reilly, who, who runs O'Reilly Media, along with a whole range of other people who felt that the term open source needed defining. Right. And so uh, the Open Source Initiative was created to be the steward of a thing called the open source definition, which is like the industry standard for open source licenses. Okay. It's always been an independent California nonprofit uh, run independently by a volunteer board. There have never been members before. Okay, <clears throat> wow. So it's never been under corporate control, always independent of any influence. That's, that's very hipster, actually. Well, it's, it's like, we have this entity, but you can't join it but all that has changed, right? So w what we decided to do a while back, we decided that licensing was pretty much a, a known science now. We have over 60 open source licenses um, and approving them, we know how to do that. We felt that the term open source is such a strong term that it would be great if we created a space where individuals could achieve what they couldn't achieve elsewhere. Right. Maybe people want to create a user group resource network. Maybe they want to create a, a mailing list for women in tech. Maybe they want to create a, a social fund for developers. Wow. Those are all things that you really couldn't easily get started somewhere else. But OSI is the place where we now want you to come, become an individual member, and get that done. So how was OSI structured before, and why did you decide to open it to individuals now? So uh, OSI was structured as a, a 10 or 11 person board of directors. And that board of directors... Of uh, which you are a part of. So I, was, I joined that board of directors two years ago and I was involved as a board observer before that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that board of directors votes to make replacements for people who leave the board. So it's been a self-perpetuating board. Yeah. There's been no influence from outside the organization on who can be on that board. And that's what's kept OSI so independent and so trustworthy as a standard set of open source licensing. As far as opening it up for individuals now, why did you decide to do that? Well, we, we felt that uh, there was a need for a neutral space where those sorts of things could be done. If you look at all of the other open source organizations around the world, they're all places that have got a particular uh, software project they work on, or a particular ideological slant, or a particular license they support. And there you was, just wanted to be completely we wanted to be a neutral off the space. scale with that. Yeah, yeah. A, a place where you could achieve things that you couldn't achieve in any of those places. Do you have an example of that? Well, so one example of something you couldn't achieve in another place is uh, creating a repository of academic research about open source. There used to be a website run by MIT that allowed you to uh, search for open source research, but that went away about five years ago. Hmm. And OSI would be a great place for some members to, <laughs> to come in and get that started again. Independent of biases. Independent of biases, not driven by any commercial interest, not driven by any political interest. I guess. A number one question for me would be, what is the difference between free and open source? Okay. And some of them cross paths Well, too. actually, um, I don't believe there's any difference between free and open source software. I believe they're just simply different angles to look at the same reality from. The ideas behind free software are ethical reasons. They're about the imperative for software to always be available to use, study, modify, and distribute. Okay. Uh, and that's a personal imperative. Um, open source is more a pragmatic imperative. It's how you make software into free software. And uh, one of the reasons it was started is because companies are not ethical things. They're, they're not really people. <laughs> Don't tell the government, but they're not really people. And so having an ethical discussion with a company is not a good idea. You can't shame a company. Yeah. But you can persuade a company that if it uses an open source method, it will make better software, it will make more profit, it will influence more people. So open source is a, the, the... Without alienating people. So open source is the pragmatic <laughs> view of software freedom, and the Free Software Foundation looks at the ethical view of software freedom. But I believe they're the same thing viewed from different angles. It's easy to forget that uh, open source is actually an ethical construct. Uh, for you as a person, what's really important is your freedom. Right. But for you as a the, somebody running a small business, what matters is that you're able to be successful and, and profitable and run the business. Yeah. They're both views of the same reality. Um, having a profit motive doesn't exempt you from being ethical, and being ethical doesn't exempt you from making a living. 
So how did you kick this off? What are some of your affiliates? How did you get started with this? Okay, so we, we took the step um, uh, actually two years ago to try and get started on becoming a member organization. When you came in? And when I came Interesting. in. Interesting. And we, we actually asked uh, a, a community of experts on open source what we should do. And we discovered if you ask a community of 50 experts what to do, you get at least 55 different incompatible ideas. And two years of discussion. And two years of discussion. So we reset that process last year and we decided instead we would just try and get members in and see what happened when, they, when you gave them a place where they could innovate. So we started this spring with our affiliate membership, and that's non-profit organizations like the Apache Software Foundation, Wikimedia Foundation, Creative Commons, uh, Debian Linux. Nice. All of those are affiliate members of OSI now. There are actually 22 now. And if any of your viewers actually are part of a user group that is a, a non-profit, we really welcome them joining in and becoming affiliates as well. That's awesome. So as far as corporations, um, will they be able to get a piece of this open source initiative by? Uh, well, they will be able to. We hope in the fall this year, uh, Northern Hemisphere, to be able to uh, get a, a corporate membership drive running. And we already have spoken to a number of corporations who we know are going to be interested in joining. Uh, we hope that several of those will be offering member premiums to our individual members. Oh, okay. So, so I we'll hope have that multiple tiers. I, for I believe actually that uh, individual members will discover they're going to be able to get discounts on hardware. They're Ooh. going to be able to get books, conference attendances. <laughs> so it's worth individuals joining, even if the the idea of getting involved in the work is not quite so appealing. Uh, being involved, you can be being involved to get the premiums is actually worth it. There are none now. The only premium at the moment is to be in on the ground floor of getting the change to OSI started. But come the fall, there's going to be some interesting premiums. That's awesome. So how do we join? Just so starting individuals. Uh, so if you are an individual who believes in open source software, then go to opensource.org/join. Right. That's very simple to remember, opensource.org/join, and sign up. And uh, as you sign up at the bottom of the screen. Sign in to the members discuss mailing list because that's the place all Where the actions go. You have going. your sounding board, yes. and, and so um, is it a year-long membership? Is it a lifetime membership? So we're we're signing people up on an annual basis. Okay. We're asking for a donation of forty dollars. All right. Uh, we will accept other donations if you want to mail in a check for some other amount. Oh, feel yeah. free. Put a couple commas in there. But on the website, it's a it's a forty dollar donation. Oh, absolutely wonderful. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day. <laughs> it's we're wrapping it up here at OzCon 2012. Thanks, Simon. Thank you very much. Good to meet you. You too. Yeah. Now it's time for some sponsor love. Oh. Seriously though, I've been with HostGator since my first blog post in 2008. With Linux-based servers and plans starting at under four bucks a month, you get 24-7 support and access to tons of website building tools. HostGator has gone green and is 130% powered by wind energy. Did I mention they'll even migrate your current site for free? For OS Alt viewers, HostGator is offering 25% off your order or your first month free. Just go to HostGator.com and enter the code NixieOSAlt at checkout.